Okay, hello everyone. Um, my name is Louise and um, I just want to welcome you to today's webinar, which will be delivered by Holly Miller from Ask Apprenticeships. Thank you so much for joining us today and I'd like to start with a very quick sound check just to make sure the audio is working for everybody. So um, on your computer you'll see a questions box. If you can just type a yes into that box for me, if you can hear me properly, and I'll just give a few moments for those responses to come through. Lovely. Yeah, I'm seeing some yeses. That's perfect. Um, if you do have any audio problems or anything throughout, just pop, um, pop any issues you have into that questions box and we'll try and sort it out for you. Okay, so um, as I said, my name is Louise and I'm a project facilitator for the Southern Universities Network and the Sun is a partnership of six universities and part of a wider programme called UniConnect. And um, if you didn't know about UniConnect, um, its central aim is to reduce the gap in higher education participation between the most and least represented groups. And the webinar that you're taking part in today forms part of the staff CPD element of that programme. Today's webinar is being recorded so that you can share it with colleagues after the event and watch again if you'd like to. And um, as I said, you're welcome to pop questions in the questions box throughout the presentation. And we'll have a few moments at the end of the session, um, well, we'll have a little bit of time at the end of the session for a bit of a Q&A with Holly. So um, do pop those questions in. I'll be keeping an eye on the questions box and um, pop them in throughout the session. So as you think of them, just pop them in and then we'll put them to Holly at the end of the session. If you can, I'd really encourage you to stop for a couple of moments at the end of the session, just for a few little um, evaluation questions, just so we can get some feedback on today's session and just see um, if you enjoyed it. And um, yep, just keep on popping those questions in the questions box. Okay, so um, I'm going to hand over now to our presenter today, who is Holly from Ask Apprenticeships. So over to you, Holly. Thank you very much. Hey, good evening um, or good afternoon to all of you. Um, I just wanted to start off by um, letting you know what we're going to cover um, in this webinar. So I'm going to give you some basic information about apprenticeships because um, I know it's likely that you have lots of knowledge of this area already, uh, but they have changed so um, dramatically. Um, dramatically recently and so it's really important for people to be aware of those changes. Then I'm going to just show you some new resources for students that are being developed at the moment in partnership with SUN um, and lastly I will tell you a bit more about the ASK programme so that's when we can come in and deliver sessions to your students about apprenticeships but also around career support advice and guidance because lots of the things like writing applications and doing interviews is applicable for any next steps they take after school and college. So you'll know about the changes and um, I also want to tell you a bit about the roles that are available and um, make sure that you feel confident to use all of the sessions that we have available. So I'm going to start off just with a bit of a myth buster really. Um, so the first one is that lots of young people and parents and sometimes teachers don't really realise that apprenticeships are actually really well paid nowadays. So this is a bit of a myth that's been around because historically apprenticeships didn't have great salaries linked to them. Um, and also because of the different levels of apprenticeships offered now, um, you'll see on here they go right up to degree level and actually include masters. They do mean that there are higher level roles being offered as apprenticeships and so they therefore also have decent salaries with them. Yeah. Lastly, lots of people often think that apprenticeships aren't very well paid because the national minimum wage for apprenticeships per week it is reasonably low, but most employers actually don't really pay that rate because they want to attract um, really great uh, candidates to their apprenticeships. So the salaries range anything from seven to eight thousand up to twenty, and there are apprenticeships available in the twenty thousands and even thirty. So I will tell you a, a bit more about that when we're talking about some particular apprenticeships and the levels that they're offered about. So to me, the next fact is the most important one. Students are normally most interested in the salary element of apprenticeships, but I actually think the statistic that ninety percent of young people stay in work post apprenticeship is 
is the most important one. I say oh, this to them. Sorry to, sorry to butt in. Oh. Um, I don't know if your slides are showing properly. I can just see your title slide at the moment. Sorry, guys, slight oh. technical hitch. Um, so I don't know if you want to just try sharing again. Ah, there we go. Can everyone see that now? If you could just chuck another yes in the questions box for me. If you can, oh, we'll just pop it back onto. Yeah, lovely. Okay, thank you guys. Sorry about that. I'll go now. <laughs> thank you. Sorry. You haven't missed much. There's just a square there that says earn a salary. So I've covered that. So the next box down is about the 90 percent of young people stay in work. So I would always say that this was an important fact when I would go around and do these presentations two or three years ago, because actually we're generally in a different climate at the moment. Um, and, you know, compared to five, ten years ago where young people could finish college or finish university and get themselves a job no matter really what qualification they got themselves it has changed quite significantly and young people would be finishing university with a great qualification and still really be struggling to find themselves a role the pandemic adds to that and we just don't know what it will mean for the employability of young people so actually going to do an apprenticeship does give them a little bit more security i can't say guaranteed that they will get a job with that employer but it is likely because that employer would have invested a lot of time and money into these young people and hopefully the students will have had the opportunity to really impress that employer and show them what they're capable of of those 10% of young people that don't stay working with that company, a lot of the time that's because they found themselves another position um, and they um, have decided that that company doesn't work for them or they want to do something a little bit different or they've managed to get themselves a promotion. So it isn't always because they haven't been offered an opportunity. So as you will see here, um, one of the key changes about apprenticeships I've already mentioned is that you can now gain them up to degree level. Um, one of the main benefits is doing an apprenticeship as um, doing a degree as an apprenticeship is that it means you won't have to pay the £9,000 a year university fees because that is covered by the government and the employer. So lots of young people who might have thought that gaining a degree was unreachable for them because of the financial element it now brings it back in as a bit of a reality and obviously they will be gaining a salary on top of that saving for the fees so um, it makes it even more possible for them the degree that they gain is exactly the same as any degree um, offered through a university so they graduate the same as the other students and have all of the other benefits so they don't need to worry about that Lots of young people will say to me, I really don't want to do a degree level apprenticeship um, or maybe even an advanced or higher equivalent to college level because they really want to be able to go to college or university for the social life. Um, and I understand this. Um, you get to meet lots of new people. You have quite a light um, timetable. And so it is something that attracts young people. But actually, I will often talk to them about the fact that there are some really big employers that we're going to talk about later in the presentation who offer apprenticeships. And they may be taking on a cohort of young people that they can build relationships with. Or they might go and work for an employer that has quite a young workforce, so they'll still be able to meet new people that way. In addition, I was um, chatting to an apprentice the other day that's at Portsmouth doing a BAE degree level apprenticeship, and he's hired a room in a student house. So he's met lots of people that way. He goes to work in the morning and his flatmates go to university. So there are ways around it. Um, the other thing I talked to them about is the fact that they can relocate to do um, a degree apprenticeship or any level apprenticeship if they feel that earlier on they would feel comfortable living away from home and gaining that independence. Because I think independence um, and living somewhere new is another thing that attracts young people, particularly to university. Um, but apprenticeships are offered all over the UK and so they would be able to access um, an apprenticeship in uh, Manchester or Bristol or anywhere they thought and, and it might be that they actually choose to relocate because there's a particular company they really want to go and work for and so they decide to move because of that. The last thing that I talk to young people about with apprenticeships is the fact that it is not the easy option and I say this for a couple of reasons. 
Firstly, a lot of young people would think that an apprenticeship was an easy role, maybe a little bit like work experience where they would just be doing photocopying, a bit of filing, making cups of tea, but that is really not the case. So lots of young people, when they go and do apprenticeships, will be given quite a reasonable amount of responsibility, but they will be actually having the opportunity to get their hands dirty, do some really interesting tasks and um, get themselves some great skills as a result of doing the apprenticeship and that means they get to learn for some really skilled people as well the downside of that is that it means that they're having to hold down a full-time job and study at the same time which isn't easy and you're expected to perform at a certain level the same as everyone else in that office so you can't be thinking you're going to go out one night socializing um, and then you may have to be in work at eight nine o'clock the next day um, also, it could be that their friends are going out one evening, but their work's been really busy and they've got an assignment to do. And so they need to stay at home and do that. So, there, you know, there will be some difficult decisions that they need to make through the, through the way. So they really shouldn't think of it as their easy option. So for me, something that's really exciting that's changed about apprenticeships is the range of different roles that you can do an apprenticeship as. Historically, if you were to ask someone about apprenticeships, then they would say that you could do them in roles such as hair and beauty, childcare, maybe some of the trades, electrician, plumber. But if you want to do any of those roles, an apprenticeship is a great option. However, now you can choose to do an apprenticeship if you're interested in a variety of other careers from aviation to journalism architecture teaching they could come and work al alongside some of you so there's lots of different roles that they could do an apprenticeship in now so a, a lot of option out there and these are just a few and I talked about the fact that there's larger employers offering apprenticeships now so this screen just shows a couple of those um, when I do these presentations with students, there's a lot of young people interested in companies like ASOS, Jaguar, Google, BBC. Uh, they maybe want to go to Starbucks uh, for a discount. So I talk to them about the fact that they can go and work for one of these larger employers in an area that they're really interested in, even if they don't think they have the skills in that company's core market so it could be that there's a young man who's really really interested in cars and would love to go and work at Land Rover or Rolls Royce but he just doesn't think he's very practical and he wouldn't be able to make cars for example now I would say to him that doesn't matter because all of these large companies have really big um departments within them, central teams like finance, um, HR, logistics. And so he would be able to go and do an apprenticeship in one of those things that suits his skills. So he shouldn't rule it out. I've insinuated a bit about the different levels and how apprenticeships now go up to a higher level. So just to give you a bit of an idea, level two apprenticeships equivalent to GCSEs, level three is A level, and then we now have from four to seven. So level four is a foundation degree, five and six is the equivalent of the second and third year at university, and then seven is up to masters. So a really wide range of apprenticeships there. And as I said, depending on the level of apprenticeship you're doing, it normally gives students a bit of an indication of what the salary may be. So I often see when I'm searching for roles with students that level two apprenticeships are mainly from seven to ten thousand pounds once you get to level three they go from about nine to twelve thousand pounds and then the higher in degree level apprenticeships are anything from twelve to eighteen thousand but as i said there are ones in the 20s and the navy even offers apprenticeships up to thirty thousand So one of the things young people need to think about when they're considering their next steps is how do they learn best? So for me, an apprenticeship is really great for a kinesthetic learner. If they want to be able to learn some information, watch someone do it and then have a go themselves, an apprenticeship is going to be great for them. Also, if they retain information and demonstrate what they're capable of through um, 
doing a task and showing that they've done it and reflecting on that task and creating a portfolio rather than writing essays and exams then it might be that an apprenticeship will allow them to demonstrate their skills um, in a, a more successful way so they need to consider that when they're thinking about which um, route they want to go when they finish school or college and another thing to think about is that they might actually be needing to make a decision about the type of career that they want to go into um, a bit earlier on. So I know I chose to go to university and do psychology because I still hadn't worked out what I wanted to do. But if one of your students at year 11 or year 13 choose to do an apprenticeship, they're not going to have that option of choosing a subject that could be open like geography or sports or psychology they will need to choose a work profession to go into like we talked about before project management journalism so they need to have a bit more of an idea about what it is they want to do and what their skills suit um, however it doesn't mean they need to stay in that um, sector forever they can use those skills and move on to um, another area later down the line when they're researching their apprenticeships there's lots of different things to take into consideration and one of them will be how the learning is delivered and that takes into consideration their learning style so they have 20 percent of their working week for off the job learning so about one day a week they will have the opportunity to work alongside colleagues where they're demonstrating things to them, to learn things through online modules, or to have classroom learning delivered by their employer or by going out to a college, university or training provider for a day. So it can be a real mixture and they need to look at the modules that are being offered by the apprenticeships they're interested in and make sure they pick one that will suit um, their style best. So as a teacher or careers advisor in a school or college, you need to help them make a good decision about which apprenticeship will help them be successful. So the first thing to consider is how that learning takes place. Another thing to work with them on is the salary that gives a bit of an indication about how committed the um, employer is, but it might be something that's a driver for them if they don't have that um, backing at home financially to be able to um, to carry on study. You need to make sure that you're supporting them at the right times of year. So um, a lot of apprenticeships are started to be advertised in January, February by some of the larger companies. And then you need to think about um, if they're thinking of a smaller company, starting to speak to them about doing applications in March or April. So those are just some deadlines to, to have in, in your mind with them. Um, they will need to prepare for the application process. It isn't easy just because um, it's an apprenticeship. There may be various steps through that. So anything you can do to give them career support will be really great. Um, next, the, the next element is around how the learning's delivered and how they learn best. So we've already talked quite a bit about that. And lastly, you need to think about what next step is going to work for them. So a lot of young people will think about the fact that um, it's easy just to go to college. Everyone goes there and then and then they go and do that because it's quite an easy application process. And after a few months, they drop out. Um, and so really talking to them about what they want out of their next steps and where they see their career going and how they want to progress will help them. Um, choose an apprenticeship that's right and know if it's a good apprenticeship for them. The last thing to take into consideration is that training providers are also asked to um, also have to take part in having Ofsteds and so there will be information around their um, their quality so definitely um, have a look at that on the website with the students. So next, I just wanted to give you a bit of a sample, really, of some of the roles that are out there and just the variety in the Hampshire area that's available. Um, so as you can see, BAE is a really large um, apprenticeship provider within the Hampshire area and their closing date is actually coming up um, now. So um, the, any students that are year 11 or 13 will have probably missed that now, although they're already thinking about it. Um, unless they're already thinking about it. 
digital marketing is a massive area at the moment within apprenticeships and something that young people are really interested in because um, they are often using social media platforms and it's them using those skills to think about how they can best um, promote a company. So we have lots of those advertised and lots of young people interested in it. As you can see with the, um, the next two, there's some really great salaries being offered here for, for these positions at 11 and, and over 15,000 available um, working as a draft person or um, within engineering. And again, lots and lots of apprenticeships offered within engineering. Um, and lastly, this is sort of like a the onboarding executive as a sales and customer service apprenticeship. And I do find that there's quite a lot of young people actually that haven't done as well at school or college but are really great with building relationships and um, you know having a bit of chat and, and they really prosper in roles like that so that's a good one to think about for those young people so I just wanted to show you a sample of some of the new resources that we're developing at the moment for students to use or potentially teachers to deliver lessons around so they're still in development at the moment so this is a sneak preview uh, but we're looking at something for year seven and eight all around their strengths and their soft skills and how they can identify those and once they've identified them think about what career they might be interested in doing so as you can see here uh, there's a soft skill um, highlighted and then um, various different ways that they could develop that soft skill through hobbies. Um, we're also looking at having some activities around which role suit which soft skill. So you'll be able to, to click on here. We're trying to make it as interactive as possible. There's also going to be some sessions around presenting yourself best self online because there's so many more interviews that are happening in that arena at the moment. So we're, we're currently creating some resources on on that topic um, and there's going to be an apprenticeship game coming out um, as well that's being developed, but that's still in the early stages. Uh, this is another section from the online um, resources. So just before I go on to talk about um, what it is we can offer you and give you some more tips as staff, um, it would be great if people could either write in the chat or maybe unmute if there's anything that they think with resources around apprenticeships or career development that you know um, there's a gap or anything that you think would work really well with your students, any particular activities, um, that would be really useful because they're in such early stages of development at the moment that um, we would be able to change things around. A few suggestions coming in. Um, worth mentioning as well, if anything comes to mind after the session today, you're very welcome to um, to pop myself or Holly an email and I can put um, put the contact details for us both in the chat at the end of the session. Um, but yeah, if you can think of any ideas now, that'd be fantastic. Um, and if anything comes to mind later down the line as well, you can always share that, that with us at a later date. But yeah, getting your feedback now would be fantastic. Great, thanks Louise. Again, there will be a stop at the end for any questions. So if you think of something that springs to mind while I'm delivering the rest of the session, I'm happy for you to um, write, write things in there um, and it be picked up at the end as well. Louise, it'd be great if you could um, feed back some of the things that are being said, because yeah, at the moment sorry. I can't see any yeah. of it no worries i can definitely share so a couple of suggestions that we've had coming through um something about creating a task comparing fe and he with apprenticeships so the differences between those different routes um maybe with the pros and cons of each as well mm -hmm. yeah um that's all the suggestions we have at the moment but if anything else comes to mind um yeah do let us know and do share that with us it'd be great to know your thoughts 
Great, thanks. Yeah, that's really useful. I think um, I actually got asked a really great question from a student the other day um, around cut cons of an apprenticeship because they just said, this just sounds amazing. Um, I, I don't know why I would not think about doing an apprenticeship. And, and my main answer for that was actually that it's all down to the person. And um, some of the um, cons to apprenticeships would actually just be specific to some people because it doesn't suit their learning style, or maybe they're not very organized. And this requires you to be quite disciplined because you have to do your learning in your own time. So you do need to think about those things, but that wouldn't be the case for everyone. So actually, to me, the answer is never, there's loads of pros for this and loads of cons for that. It's about the particular person and thinking about what's going to suit them best so when you're speaking to students definitely have that in mind okay so i'm just going to show a little video here with some um top tips for um teachers and careers professionals in schools and colleges to have a bit of a think about um if you are speaking to students about apprenticeships I think a really exciting thing to know about apprenticeships is that there are now over 500 different apprenticeship standards available. Apprenticeships are for every student and it's really important all students are being informed about opportunities as they can range from level 2 all the way up to level 7. Hi, I've been an apprentice from level 3 all the way through to level 6 and I'm now thinking about my level 7, which is a master's level, all with no student debt. I think it's important to know and also great that apprenticeships are advertised at lots of different points in the year, so students need to keep looking and if they change their mind, something might have come up outside the normal college application process. What's great about apprenticeships is that you don't need to be based out of London in order to seek opportunities. Our apprentices across all locations have responsibility, autonomy and exposure to clients from day one. We see apprentices progressing really quickly at Parliament because they're balancing studying and real life experience. Plus they can start at different times throughout the year, so they don't have to wait until September. I think what's exciting is that there's such an amazing buzz around apprenticeships at the minute and everyone's talking so positively about them so that's got to be a good thing. What is brilliant about apprenticeships is you're not just studying the theory of something but you're putting it into practice straight away. Apprenticeships are amazing because you have the chance to not only learn, apply your learning, but earn as well, better than the job better than being a student, the best of both worlds. Students at Denby are so excited about apprenticeships as this route is perfect for Luton. It has an airport and companies such as TUI, Vauxhall and EasyJet. Due to the progression opportunities and rewards offered by employers such as these, parents and the wider community are shifting their perceptions and the apprenticeship pathway is finally and quite rightly losing its stigma. The increase in high-end degree apprenticeships have really changed the goalposts for our young people and offering alternatives to university. Opportunities with organisations that might not have been around otherwise have been possible and this is just a positive thing to all of us. What I love about apprenticeships is the endless opportunities that it provides and I'm talking from personal experience, they really do change lives. What I think is really amazing about apprenticeships is the range of different things you can do. It's phenomenal and there's no such thing as a typical apprenticeship. What's so great about apprenticeships is the range of careers available in them now, from medicine, sciences to creative subjects. There's pathways everywhere. What I love as a parent is that there are so many opportunities, even in your local area. You don't necessarily have to leave home you can find a fantastic opportunity in your local town. 
Okay, so as a teacher of computer science, it's really exciting to see the opportunities for our young people in technical industries with opportunities at places such as GCHQ, where they can really channel their creativity and get a more pragmatic approach that maybe university doesn't afford them. There are so many opportunities for progression in construction. We see apprentices progressing quickly because they balance working and hands-on experience with underpinning knowledge. Hello, my name is Manpreet Shokar. I'm a female mechanical engineer. Choosing an apprenticeship that's best suited my interests has helped me break down gender bias. I'm amazed at some of the great salaries being offered to apprentices. It's really exciting that some apprenticeships offer starting salaries from 15, 20, even 25,000 pounds. The introduction of the apprenticeship levy has allowed companies like Coca-Cola to kind of break the mould when it comes to apprenticeships and create opportunities to offer lifelong learning no matter what age you're at. So hopefully some really interesting tips there that I hadn't um, covered already. I think for me, um, one of the things that's really interesting here is um, they talked about the fact that you can apply any time. And I've said there are these key windows, but I would definitely recommend your students going on to find an apprenticeship and setting up an account so that you can they can put alerts on so they get sent through anything that happens so that will overcome that barrier there and um, there was also someone talking about the fact that they've progressed up and there are actually some companies um as an example the navy will start people at level two and help them build all the way up there's other there's other organizations out there that do that as well so it really gives them that route of progression which which works well with some students um, and I think for me the one that wasn't captured there that I just don't think I've talked about yet is about the employability of these young people from doing apprenticeships because actually when they go for an interview in a in any role that they want to do they will have so many examples of teamwork communication working to deadlines and we often find that apprentices perform much better at interview stage than some young people um, that ha haven't got that experience because they haven't had a role yet. So I'm just going to move on to tell you a bit about the um, for the um, services that the ASK programme can offer you. So um, at the moment I think we've had a couple of face-to-face -face activities this um, school year but the majority of it has been through virtual activities. Um, it may be that later on in the year, if you wanted to have anything delivered, you may choose to have people in face to face. But obviously, we're aware that schools um, will need to think about people coming into the building and contact and things like that. So actually, I've delivered sessions when schools have been um, not on site. So the students log in, they, the school creates a secure environment for that and they're each on separately on their computers. But I've also done it where I've project, I'm projected into a classroom and the, and the teacher is helping to deliver the sessions and I've run workshops where I've been projected into 13 of the classrooms. So it's the whole year group having it. So actually sometimes it does give you um, a bit more flexibility for, for what you can do. There's also online resources that I'm going to show you. So that video there was from Amazing Apprenticeships. I will mention that in a minute. Um, and some information on the teacher and careers advice and support that's out there. So available face to face and virtually, we have an introduction to either apprenticeships, traineeships or T levels. So they're normally half an hour information session. So really the students just being talked to about these sessions. Um, and also one particularly on higher and degree apprenticeships, which is very similar to the introduction to apprenticeships. But if you want to focus on just that with a group of students, that's fine. And we also have an information session on pathways into apprenticeships. 
We've been delivering more workshops and creating um, interactive um, sessions for young people that can be delivered online. And so our Finds an Apprenticeship, um, Register and Search and Apply workshop has been created so that it can work virtually. And we also have the session on writing winning apprenticeships. And as I said, with that one on um, write, writing winning apprenticeships, applications that would actually be a lot of the skills in there would be applicable for any job application they're doing the recognizing your strengths is a new session and i really enjoy delivering that um, it does say that it's just virtual but that's because it's only been delivered um, since um, we went into the first lockdown and this session gets students to think about what it is they're really great at and how they can therefore talk about those things um, in an application or an interview. So I really like that session. And then we have an interview skills session as well for the young people. And again, that's applicable for um, apprenticeships or a role that they're applying for. Face to face, we can do more on uh, mock assessment centres, so they'll have the chance to do various different activities, a team task, interview skills, video interviews. I have actually delivered one of these online and it worked OK, but it's not as great as um, some of the other sessions. And then we've designed some specific sessions for years 11 and 13 because of the current market that they will be going into for an apprenticeship. So it talks about the types of jobs that might be available because of certain um, sectors doing really well and others not as well. Talking about online recruitment and ways to boost their employability when we maybe can't do um, volunteering or um, go and do placements. So, um, so that's just something to think about. We also run sessions to parents. I think I've only done one of these since the lockdown was on, but we can come along to parents evenings. We've also done pre-recordings of lots of these sessions so you can send them out to your students if that's easier than getting them all together at a certain time. Um, so we do an introduction to apprenticeships, which is similar to the first section of what I delivered today. And then also something specifically about supporting their child if they are going to apply for an apprenticeship so either of those are available for parents if you felt like all of the student all of the teachers in your institution needed to have more information about apprenticeships so that they would be able to talk effectively to their tutees or um, students they work with about apprenticeships then they could have a se session similar to the start of this to give them information but also more specific ones on planning apprenticeship support in your school how to link their own school subject to an apprenticeship and then also we do information sessions for teaching staff on t levels we do come along to careers fairs. I have had one school um, look at doing an online careers fair, but obviously this hasn't been as uh, frequent as before. Um, I often find that sometimes you don't get as much out of them as the other sessions, because uh, if a college is present in a careers fair, they can often speak to students about apprenticeships as well. So that's just something to think about for future planning. Um, we've just started um, looking at um, in the last couple of days and it's sort of been confirmed today, the idea of um, offering some one to one career support. It can be around apprenticeships, but also have a bit of information about career planning um, interviews or applications. For year 11s or year 13s, it can be other years, but obviously it's not as applicable. So you could um, think about booking in one-to-ones with students who you think are at risk of being neat, um, or it may just be that you've got a student you know really wants to do an apprenticeship and you would like them to be able to sit down and find out more. We could do some searching on finds an apprenticeship with them or talk to them about their strengths and what might suit them if they just really have no idea. Um, so, you know, that offer is available now. So I, I was going to ask if you could just pop in the chat some suggestions for how you think that might be easiest to book because I'm just aware that a lot of you are extremely busy at the moment and it's quite hard logistically with students um, organising things with them. So I didn't know whether it's easier for me to email out availability 
for schools to get in contact with me and tell me times that the students free or there is a system called Calendly or there's other ones where there's an online booking calendar and you can log in for free and it will show all of the availability in there and then you can book the slot. So or there may be another method as well that you can think of, but it'd be really great if you've got any feedback on these one-to-one -one sessions and what you'd like us to cover, to write that in the chat, or if you have any ideas about how to book or which of those options you think would be best for booking, that'd be great. If you would like more information or you want to book up one of these one-to-one -one sessions or any of the workshops, then you can email me. So the normal booking process for um, workshops and um, and information sessions is that you can visit the National Apprenticeship Service website and you complete a form and then that goes through to our central team. They'll run a planning meeting with you to talk about which of all of the various workshops and sessions work best and then you'll be linked up with me or one of the other delivery partners who will um, start doing that delivery within your school. So I talked about amazing apprenticeships and this is a really great website. I'm, I would have thought that most of you have been on there and probably love it, but if you haven't, I uh, just want to promote it again. So there's loads of stuff on here that, as I said, the video I played before is on there and there's lots of videos that are applicable for students um, of other people talking about their experiences of doing an apprenticeship, loads of resources on there. And I really like this vacancy snapshot, the purple one at the bottom, because that shows you all of the really large, exciting companies that are offering um, apprenticeships at the moment. The resources for teachers and careers advisors on there will help you deliver sessions, put posters up, um, run videos with students, or if you want to do CPD. Um, so loads and loads of stuff on there that's really great to look at. And as I said, um, plenty of things for students, activities to signpost them to um, and booklets with information. Um, obviously, sometimes films are better. So if you want more general information about apprenticeships, then you can follow the National Apprenticeship Service or you can call the, the central number if you've got a particular question or you can use this to signpost students to as well. OK, so we have a bit of time for questions now. So if you haven't written it in the chat box already, then pop your question down in there and then um, I will start to answer those. We'll give you just a few moments to have a think about any questions that you might have for Holly. Um, so yeah, do have a think, do use this time effectively to, to ask any questions you have at all about apprenticeships. Um, a question that has come through is, what advice would you give to a post-16 student who's deciding between a degree apprenticeship and going to university? Because the timelines and things are quite different, aren't they, Holly, if I'm right, and you need to kind of plan ahead for that. Yeah, um, so one of the first things I talk to them about is that although they um, can only apply for a certain number of universities through UCAS, they are allowed to apply for as many apprenticeships as they want and they can apply for the apprenticeships at the same time as doing their UCAS um, the, the three for university applications. So um, I would recommend that if they're not sure at the moment, then they need to be putting applications in um, for both of those things to give themselves time to think it over. You know, it might be that they get asked to have an interview, an informal chat for the apprenticeship, and they can see how that goes. And then that's giving them that time to work out which of those two options is going to be best for them. So, so that would be the first tip that I give them. Uh, the next one is um, that, you know, as has been said here, um, lots of the timescales are totally different for apprenticeships dep depending on the employer um, and the industry that they're going into. So it could be that some high and degree apprenticeships have already closed for this year um, and if they haven't they might be close to closing a lot of them it will be over the next month that they will close um, off their applications it may be that there are smaller companies that will have a slightly longer application 
process and so they'll have a, a bit more time to think about that uh, but they really need to get themselves on to find an apprenticeship and set up alerts for any higher and degree level apprenticeships that are being advertised on that search so that site so that they get an email about it if they know which particular one they want to do they can put that in the words um, as well for the search so that it's more specific um, and then I guess the last sort of bit of advice I'd be giving them is for them to really spend some time thinking about what's going to suit them best, um, what they think will help give them the, the best opportunities later down the line because of the person that they know that they are. Um, and, and to do that weighing up really to, to work out what, what will suit them better um, and, um, you know, ultimately it might be that financial um things have to be how they make their decision in the end but if that isn't the case then they really just need to think about what style is going to suit them best for for how they know they work and learn yeah that's great thank you um and then uh, one more question that's come through is about um if a student's starting on an apprenticeship and they're kind of currently in the apprenticeship if they change their mind or if they, if they no longer like it what's the process what would happen in that situation yeah so um they have a contract of employment like any other member of staff so they need to give notice for that um, then they will have a couple of options to them really. It could be that they still want to um, do an apprenticeship in that area, so they still want to work towards their level three apprenticeship in um, in uh, digital marketing um, or dental nursing say and it might have just been that it was that employer that didn't suit them so they would then have a window to be able to try and identify themselves a new employer to go and work with if they wanted to do something totally different then there isn't a limit on how many apprenticeships you're allowed to do it isn't right you've done one so you're not allowed to do another one so they would just have to start over the application process again and I think they just need to bear in mind how that could look on applications when they're applying for other things so you know I really would encourage them to persevere with things um, if if they're just a bit on the fence and and be sure that it definitely is right to make that jump because if they do three different apprenticeships and only stay at each of them for a couple of months then that's not going to help them with their future career options when they're applying for roles and putting in applications and cvs yeah thank you yeah really important to consider like you said how that how that looks to to other employers lovely um, i think it seems like that's the um i haven't got any more questions coming through at the moment so thank you very much for that um i'm just going to ask everyone to um to answer a couple of polls just for some feedback for us now before we finish the webinar so you'll see a poll um shortly appearing on your screen and we will have a bit of time after the poll so if anything else kind of pops into your mind um please just pop it in the questions box and we can answer that for you but i'll be launching the first poll um just now for you just give you a few moments to answer that okay thank you and then the next one. Okay, lovely, the cable rated. Just one more. Wonderful, and then just one final one. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you very much for answering those for us. That'd be really, really helpful for kind of any future sessions that we have. Um, Thank you all so much for attending and thank you so much to Holly for that webinar. It was really, really interesting. Um, I've definitely learned a lot this evening about apprenticeships and I hope that you guys have as well. Um, 
some people are asking if we can share the PowerPoint. I'll find out um, from Holly after the session and see if we can share that with you. However, what you will get is the, um, the session recording after the session as well in an email in a couple of days' time. You're very welcome to share that with colleagues or whoever you feel um, would benefit from it. And um, yeah, so thank you very much for coming and thank you to Holly. I'm going to end the webinar there. Um, and yeah, thank you for coming along and have a lovely evening. Thanks, everyone. And thank you, Holly. Take care now. Thank you all. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.